right now, so there's the air's going out there, so we smoke from the other side. Okay, we're looking for a few things. The bees I've seen, the adamants have a fair amount of nectar in them. They do not look like they're short and starving, and there's no guard bees. If I look here, there's no bees following my movement of my hand with their heads. So I'm not seeing any any guard bees here, so that's good. So that means we, we don't have to worry too much about uh, smoke. Now we're going to look on the ground and see if we see any crawlers. If we see bees with deformed wings crawling around, that would be a sign that we have a, a high deformed wing uh, virus uh, infection in the colony. I don't see any kind of bees with deformed wings down here. So that's another, another uh, good sign. We see adequate flight coming uh, right now, so things look good. So what I'm going to do, here watch, I'll smoke on this side first. See that smoke just suddenly blew right out? Yeah. Didn't go into the hive at all. So I'll smoke on that side. And smoke gets sucked into the hive. So now that, that hive has got a taste of smoke. That's, that's all you need in that hive right there. And notice I didn't bang the front of the hive with the smoker. That's a mistake I often see. The smoker comes and goes plunk against the wood. Now the reason that people have hit the hive like that is why? With the frog, the uh, fallacy? I thought it was just stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize it was done on purpose. I would never do it on purpose. A little bit of smoke underneath the lid. Now, if you're not sure about the hive, there's two ways of lifting the hive. One way is this way, and the other way is this way. Okay? So if I was not sure if it's an Africanized hive, I would probably not do this method. I would probably do this method, stepping back like this. So right now, now you can come around closer. Try not to stand directly in front of the hive. Come around to the side, the side here. So we've got a fairly weak hive, very few bees up here at, on, the, on the top bars. I don't even see a cluster, so they're coming up to, to feed up here. So there's no sense even looking at the top box. So we're going to go right to the next box down. So I'll split that. There's smoke right there. I don't let the box back down, so I don't want to crush any bees. Now I'll either stand this up on end, or, or you put your lid down like this upside down and put it in a kitty corner on top of there. That way you don't crush any bees. Okay, so he's got a feeder with sugar syrup. Okay, now watch. There's yeah. no bees looking at me right now. I should have waited to, to see. I, I, you have to stop me because I just do this all on autopilot. Okay? <laughs> I don't think about what that you guys are watching me. I also take off your sunglasses. Um, yeah. Sunglasses accentuate the look of an eye, and the place that bees mm. go to sting is eyes. So a dark thing on your near the top of your body means that's a good place to sting. So, okay, we're not seeing any. These bees are very gentle. Only a couple of bees looking. Now watch, even these faces right here. When I put a little bit of smoke across, mm -hmm. see how the bees just turn around and go right back down. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. Once the bees are down like that, then you can go into the into the hive. So I'm going to spread these frames. I'm going to give myself lots of room here. So I'm going to get clear myself three quarters of an inch of space right here. That three quarters of an inch is, lets me pull this out without crushing any bees. Now, and you notice my hand? I put my hand right here to hold this so when it comes apart there's no pop. I control that. And I do put my knuckle against this one. I'm controlling that pop. I don't even think about what I'm doing. I just automatically just do that. And then what I'll do is I'll give them one more, I disturbed them, give them one more little puff right here. Now you slide your fingers down inside the end bars, not to the outside. Now this is where beekeepers make a mistake and they hurt their backs. Yeah, we're blocking them. These frames are glued down. If you go to just pick this frame up, what muscles do you use to pick it up? If I hold it like this and try to lift it up, what specific, specifically, point to the muscle, what are you using to pick it up? Your lower back muscle right here. The one that goes out in beekeepers. So I never pick up a frame that way. What I do is I put my knuckles down and I do all the lifting with my knuckles. My mm -hmm. back felt no weight at all. Once it's broken free, then you can pick it up. But do the break free with your knuckles. Okay, so now we see a frame right here. They're putting pollen on the, on the bottom, underneath the brood right here. They um, have brood of all ages. Mm -hmm. They have uh, a dying larva right there. So you can see this right there, see the larva partially mm -hmm. move mm -hmm. dead inside the bottom mm -hmm. of that cell. So they got some kind of infection going right there. So that tells me I want to look around a little more. The brood pattern in general looks pretty healthy. So they don't have any kind of serious infection. And the queen is laying beautifully. Every single 
cell in here has a has a uh, larva or an egg from the uh, queen, a freshly laid egg. So the queen's laying well. The colony is stimulated now. And looking, let's take a look at a little older flavor brood. So now, this is called a Hoffman self-spacing frame. So it has a white, a white part right here. As I come down, I'm going to lower it to here, and I ask, right when I get to the point, I get the two self-spacing end bars tight, and I put down like this. That way, when you're going down, if you go in the middle and then shove it sideways, the queens often want to run around the side of the frame, and it's very easy to crush a queen bee. If you, if you glide the self-spacing end bars close to each other as you put the frame in, you won't crush any queens. Glide them parallel with the frame or at slight angle? Parallel. Okay. Well, I'll show you. So I pick up, come down, and when I put it back in, see look here, I just, just about touch right oh, there and okay. just slide it right down there. That way you don't crush a queen. Okay, now our brood pattern's a little spotty, and I see some more sick larvae. Okay, mm -hmm. there's a sick one, there's a sick one, there's a sick one, sick one, sick one. Yep. Those are all dying, dying pupae right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have some, and there's another one. So this shot brood and those dying pupae tell us that we have some kind of virus infection going on here. It's not a, it's not a bacterial infection, it's not hitting those bees. Um, and it's not looking like varroa sensitive hygiene because it's happening at, um, at uh, uh, the larvae are, are discolored, the pupae are. Can you all see the deformed wing virus bee? Near the top of the bar, don't point at it, or you take away the joy, oh, of, discovery, sorry. joy of discovery from everybody else. <laughs> That's varroa induced? That's virus induced, virus which induced. is an indication of varroa. It's mm -hmm. right under my finger, this area. Can you, all, yeah. can you all see the bee with the deformed wings? Right under my finger area. At oh, what okay. age or at what point does a uh, deformed wing bee decide to leave the hive? Uh, soon. She'll walk, she'll walk out soon. Uh, this one actually is going to decide really soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, uh, what I'm seeing is a colony in the middle of deformed wing virus ep epidemic right here. Now, we haven't seen a varroa mite yet. Um, so why don't we go ahead and do a mite wash? This would be a good one to, to, to see what kind of mite level we have in this hive. So first thing, look at them. So you're starting to pull these pupae out. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to do a good look to make sure we don't have the queen on here. The queen's not oh, on here. Pupae right here. Come on. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's the main symptom of varroa? Deformed wing virus is the main, is, is most typical symptom. Oh. Not necessarily. You can also get acute paralysis virus, but... Uh, you, there's no signs, you don't see anything from that. On the bees, you, you, there is no sign, the, the exact sign. Yeah, only with deformed wing virus. Thank you, Rob. Okay, so we'll put this down right here. Just here, hold this I can hold it for you. So when you. When you grab a frame, always slide your fingers out. If you grab like this, you pinch a bee, you might drop the frame. <laughs> sure. Okay. So here, you're going to have to twist that frame to use your other hand. So you this one, this one. Slide your fingers out. And there you go. Oh. oh, he got the cheap stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what kind we, of like alcohol a, is that, it? That means we can't drink it? Well, yeah, we <laughs> drink goose vodka. <laughs> much more classy. <laughs> the good stuff. Because then maybe you can make, make, make a margarita or something after. What is this? This is you can do a shake. A alcohol. Alcohol. Denature, or is it just, just rubbing alcohol. Fifty percent. Fifty percent. Wow, that's in. Yeah, usually it's seventy percent. That's fine. It, it works. I've tried it down to thirty-five percent. It works just fine. Ninety-nine cents. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna get a sample of young bees. Now the old bees just all flew out. All we got left is young bees right now. Right now I'm gonna take a, a look and make sure the queen's not in here. And we tap them down. Let them fall into the cup. Level the cup off <laughs> and dump them into there. Now you'd think that would get defensive behavior of the bees, but this does not elicit defensive behavior at all. The bees are not interested in stinging in any way. This, this, these particular things do not elicit defensive behavior. If you understand what elicits defensive behavior and what does not, you can make it look like magic when you're doing uh, bee work. <laughs> Why do I not on defense mode? Why should they? What have I done that threatens their colony? Because there is a uh, lie from the... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making any action to threaten their colony. If I was, you would all be getting stuff, right? Why is it that the added presence of light when opening the hive doesn't seem to bother them at all? 
They bother them some. Uh, younger bees are uh, negatively foot attack tactic. Older bees are possibly foot attack tactic. So which means they that move. comes with age then. It's, it's an age function. So now I'm going to pry these all together and get my spacing back right. And I close them up tight to get all the spaces closed up in between. So I always have space on the side so I can always get back inside. Randy, number one error, beginners. Right. Not tight frames. Not tighten the frames. That's number, number one error. One error. Absolutely. Above, always, always, always go and out then, Yep, and then you can't get them open the next time. Okay? So anyway, we're going to close these guys up right now. And this when I put things down, I'm not banging those hives right there. Okay, watch how I pick this up. I'm not going to use my back at all. I'm going to put all the weight on this elbow onto my knee. And onto mm. this knee. My back was never involved in any of this. Now I'm going to slide it up my knee, put all the weight on my hips. My back was never involved. I will now come over here, and now I can bend my knees, keep my back straight, put this on kitty corner, ro rotate the pl place, and I push the bees out of the way so I didn't crush any bees. Okay, the key thing is don't use your back because you will not be able to do it for too many years. Too late. And if I'm going, there are bees on the top, I would push those bees off, go past, come back here, and push those bees off. Okay? Now, we're going to do this swirl. You need 30 seconds. Okay? So, I got a, a, a timer for 15 seconds. I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. <laughs> <laughs> what are you like to be? Hang on, you're in hey, you can't sing. <laughs> See, if I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. Everyone would be in love with me. That's 15 seconds. Okay, that's how you get time. Repeat it, huh? Then you just repeat it again. I do that just to drive my sons crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so the trick is, you want to do... Um, oh, I don't have enough alcohol. I want just enough alcohol so I cover the bees a little bit. And what I've done, I've experimented with this by putting in little pieces of paper so you can watch them tumble. If you have about a, quarter, a little bit of alcohol over the bees, Every bee in there will tumble with that little tiny bit of motion. So there's no shaking involved. And the mites just drop straight out right to the bottom very, very quickly. Is that to help the bees rub against yeah. one another and dislodge? Yeah. Tumbling the... dislodges those mites. Right. Exactly. See some in the bottom. Kind of, kind of mites. Okay, now what we want to do is first you take the lid off. If you don't take the lid off first, when you pick this up, it makes a, a swirl and swirls the mites up. Now we gently lift this up and pull this out. Now these bees are done. You can count those, uh, Randy, too, if you're unsure if you got the right amount. Right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Our our limit is six for my operation. If we get over six, we are concerned. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifty, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one. 32, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33, 33